Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Moves in the Making where I share with you a little bit of my creative process as a dancer and yeah, as a dancer. <laughs> Before I start though, I just want to say if I'm looking a bit fresher than usual, that's because I got my makeup from my closet because it has been 500 years since I tried on makeup so I was like you know it might expire without me getting to use it so let's just put on a face and look fresh all right so that's it I, I'm sorry as always if you can hear the dogs from the neighborhood so let's go right into it today I'm going to be sharing a bit of the process or sharing just the behind the scenes again talking about it um, this freestyle dance film I made which was me dancing to Suse by Ben and Ben this was as you can see October 2018 um, I released this October 7 2018 but I first heard the song as early like I think a month before so September when I first watched the film Goyo so here, let's scroll down a little bit to the description box. Yeah, there, I was so inspired to well, when I watched Goyo. So at that time, 2018, I was still working part-time, night shift. And it was really, I'd say, uh, it was kind of a difficult transition period. Because <laughs> I, I was working initially, like full-time night shift. But then because I, it was really impacting my mental health, uh, I asked my boss if I could resign, but I didn't have a backup plan. Thankfully, my boss was very kind, so he offered to have me on a part-time basis. So that allowed me to have a little bit of the stability in terms of work. Like I would work from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. And then the rest of the time, just errands and then um, dance so i was pursuing dance this was around the time that i also started to do a bit of freelance dance teaching dance coaching on the side um so yeah during this time period i'm going to be making more of these moves in the making films eventually but i just want to you know start off with this one or actually i'm not sure which one's gonna come out first so whatever but yeah this one i think was like the film that I worked so hard on for um, just because I really connected to the message of the song uh, yeah and, and right there I, I see it in the description yeah I really loved the message and how it was paired it's such an amazing and equally beautiful movie so I at the time I was really experiment uh, no I was exploring like so many different art forms I was going in you know, taking classes for film, going to uh, exploring visual arts, learning from people in theater, learning from music, like just all these different industries it was so huge. Like I just was all over the place, learning everywhere and learning everything. Uh, so yeah, and then when this film came out. I was a huge fan of the first one, which was Henry Luna, and then this film came out and I watched it. I remember watching it on my own at first, and I just bawled my eyes out because of how beautiful the movie really was. And it connected to how I felt at the time, because Goyo, the main character, please do watch it. If I think it's still streaming on Netflix, I hope it still is, or if not, I will link it down below. Just watch the movie. It's really amazing um, and it's oh my gosh production value wonderful music wonderful story amazing I'm such a huge fan of the film uh, and everybody behind it because yeah like I really related to Goy because the character was like he he was a young general um, let's just review a little bit of our Philippine history or if you're not from the Philippines then I'm gonna share a little bit about it so Goyo was a basically a boy general and he was known to be yeah one of the one of the very great generals at the time during that the, the war back then um, but in the story 
yeah, the story focused a bit more on like just his self doubts because he's so young and just you know relationships with like a romantic interest and then, uh, yeah, like I I I don't feel like I'm the most qualified to talk about the film in the historical aspect, but the the main thing that really struck me the most was just how. Boyo felt like he was so young and he was so responsible for so much already and that was how I was feeling because <laughs> your girl was starting adulting and she was like lost, confused, happy free and lonely and confused in not the best way. Um, so yeah, I really love the song and I love everything about it. I should edit this description box to link the songs. But yeah, so I will do that. Anyway, so without further ado, let us watch this film. Yeah. Okay, yeah there. Let's let's pause there. Let's pause there a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry, it does that. Okay, Fantabium Elastic, we're here now. Yeah, I just adjusted myself. Okay, so, um, yeah, this is a freestyle dance film. This was, I think, the first freestyle dance film where I really was like, I want to do multiple angles, I want to do several takes, and then I will actively put them together. Because most of my other freestyle dance films, especially the most recent ones, they're literally just me freestyling just one take. Um, one take or sometimes I do multiple runs, but they're just in one, like, like multiple runs for me to just kind of make it into a semi-freestyle, semi-choreographed dance video. Um, and then, yeah, I just kind of edit it. It's really just freestyle, it's really just basic. This is me freestyling, that's it. This film though, I really intentionally was like, oh yeah, um, to connect it to this one. The reason why I was so intentional about wanting to work so hard on this was because, um, like I mentioned earlier, Goyo, the film, impacted me so much. I left the movie house crying and I think I watched this film like three times. And then I watched it again like on Netflix when it was announced that it was on Netflix. Yeah, it really just struck me so much. I was so obsessed. And plus the song, the song was really what hit me right in the heart. And yeah, as of recording, Ben and Ben just finished their first major concert. So congrats, Ben and Ben. You guys are amazing. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry for the chaos of this energy. So yeah, I said I was literally obsessed with the song to the point that during my night shift, so because I'm in customer service, I'm usually just waiting for calls. So I'd have my headphones on like this, and then I'm just waiting for calls or responding to emails of like like customer tech support stuff. Literally, that's me. Hi, this is Asha. How can I help you today? That's that. That was me. That was my life. Um, so while waiting in between, I would. Usually, I would play my favorite podcast, Gary Vaynerchuk. At the time, I would like binge listen. Sometimes I'd play. Eventually, at some point, I started playing like Brooklyn Nine Line on the side. Hi, <laughs> my previous bosses see this. I, I was waiting for like work to be done. I was multitasking. Just as a quick disclaimer, I'm. I was not not working. Anyway, okay. Um. <laughs> I'm being so defensive, I'm so sorry. But yeah, like I would usually just listen um, to this over and over because at the time I was really going through so much anxiety that I had to like bombard myself with just good music or like positive messages because otherwise I was on the brink of a breakdown. Like literally every session, every month that I would have my one on one session with my boss at the time it it would low-key turn into like a therapy session i'm just crying i'm like oh my god like yeah just just crying session he was so kind about it though so shout out yeah 
yeah, I, I just wanted to say that to emphasize how much I was listening to this song. Like, I think, was there Spotify rap in 2018? I don't know if it was like Spotify rap, the whole concept, or just like, what was your top song? And this was definitely the top song that came up because it was just on repeat. Streaming monster, like imagine for four hours straight, majority of the time, if not the whole time that I would be waiting for a call, I would just play this song. Like just to remind myself, you know, to tell myself with the message of the song. Uh, maybe later I can go a bit into the message of the song, but, or you know, maybe now. Yeah, let's, let's do that. What was my favorite lyrics? And yeah, look at the cover art. Oh, it's not there, but the cover art is like so good. Okay, there we go. So there's an unreviewed annotation on the Genius app, and it says Susie is about refusing to give up and finding oneself amid the adversities of chasing a dream. This is composed by Paolo and Miguel during a rough patch during their college days. Oh my god, and that was literally where I was at at the time. Like, I was desperate to. You know, make the world come alive with art. I had started my podcast. I did dance of finance. It started out as dance of finance. Like, I was literally just... I knew how, where I wanted to go, which was, like, art and all that. But I had no idea how to get there. Especially because, like, I felt, I felt like I was transitioning too far from um, an HR life. Like, corporate kind of oriented. Or, like, clinical psych even to art so I didn't know how to get there and uh, ikaw yung nakulong sa maling pag-iisip pangarap mo raw mananatiling isang panagin it's like uh, it's like you got stuck in the wrong way of thinking and then you know it's like when you're being told that oh your dreams are just gonna stay dreams forever uh, you know I could go may maybe I should just do a separate video for the lyrics because it's just Okay, going back to the freestyle dance film. Yeah, let's go. So as you can see, yeah, I had different this. Ta ta there. Okay, that part when I did like ta ta, you can see. Oh, sorry. You can see here. Okay, so it's whoa. Uh, it doesn't pause right away. Why is it so slow? But yeah, the, the shift of the light. I was so happy with this segment. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, the, this is it. This is the footage that I'm going to place for this part. I just love that when I did, when I moved forward and back, like it covered, this, those are two different like street lamps. And I was just like, wow, you know, just visually it looked nice. And the timing, tuck, tuck. Like, I did not intend that. I was just... Oh yeah, for th this part, yes, I am dancing in the middle of the street at probably 3 a.m. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, I, yeah. You know, that was my way of still being able to uh, hold on to dance. Despite everything that was going on in my life. So yeah, when I'd get home after my shift, uh, I'd just walk. So usually I'd get home at 2.30. Yeah, sometimes I, I would just film myself dancing. Sometimes I wouldn't film myself. Sometimes I'd just have a bit of a session uh, in my room. Um, or yeah, some days I film. And for this one, I filmed outside in the street. Because if you see my, free, my other dance films, and yeah, the previous scene from this one, I was... Uh, just in the like in the hallway outside of our condo so this one I was like yeah I, I, I need to film in more areas so I found the street yeah I just really like that let's play it again because you know I just want you to appreciate that <laughs> okay so for further clarification I was trying to highlight this coming from this yellow light to the blue light I didn't intend that but it happened Cool. Okay, there. So, yeah, this was... I, I'm not sure if this is the same take from the other one or if it was just like consecutive, two consecutive takes. 
but yes as you can see again I was in the middle of the street I was doing that in the middle of the street and yes there is a car incoming <laughs> There was a car incoming. I said, I think right after this one, I was just like, let me just finish this. And then I ran um, back inside. And I remember the car kind of paused like in front of, but I was hiding inside na, the, the, the condo lobby. But yeah, the car paused to like, I guess, sort of look for who is this girl dancing in the middle of the road at 3 a.m.? What the freaking hell? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my god, look at that. It paused at 137. Mm, 137 is my magic number. So every time I see 137, I just do a little energy dance. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I just wanted to like point that out because those are just some funny or like memorable moments from when I did this. All right, let's go. All right. Okay, there. Oh, no. Okay. There, there, there. Now, as you can see, I had multiple angles. How did I do that? At the time, I had like one i had two phones one was like a relatively newer one that i used as my main phone and then i had another that i sort of used just as storage because um it was a very old phone it was like old old android like 2014 this was yeah 2018 and it was getting pretty beat up like, I, I'm really not the type to take care so much of my phones, which is like so bad. So now I'm trying to take care of my phone a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, it was super like that. So I just, I would, I had one phone for, um, for video. I had my main phone for my music. For this one, I think I was just playing it on speaker, but there were some times that I would dance and then I'd have headphones or like small earphones. Yeah, um, and then actually in addition to in addition to that, so yeah, I'd have that set. That's my setup. I also had, because my family, we have like a super old underwater point and shoot camera and the thing with underwater point and shoot cameras is it has like because the camera has to be like protected the actual camera isn't as high quality um and in addition to that the mic is very very muffled so i forgot which is which i think this is the point and shoot camera or the other one i'm not sure anymore that's why if you notice also like a bit of the color i i had struggles with in um just making the color equal because yeah they were different types of cameras usually in more professional <laughs> environments they would have you know the same kind of camera or at least similar so that it's easier to balance out the quality and like colors and everything but yeah that was what i was working with just basic point and shoot stuff uh so what i did was yeah i just lined them up on iMovie and I, it's just like the picture in picture thing and then just to see if okay are they playing at the same time and that's when i like cut it up to edit the whole uh thing and then yeah like i think for this one i just kind of winged it like which one did i like which angles did i like better for certain parts so yeah but that's how i did the multi-angle all right let's go Okay, for that part earlier, the nakulong, nakulong, the reason why, I don't know if you could see it, but the reason why I put them over, uh, like one on top of the other, let's see a frame where it's more seen, oh, it's not so seen, yeah, okay, here, okay, there, so if you can see, 
I actually have two scenes on top of each other for this one. The reason was, the reason was, let's go dogs outside. Okay, uh, the reason was I liked, I was surprised to see that I did the same movement, like nakulong, nakulong ka, um, even though it was freestyle. So I was like, oh hey, I did the same movement. Like, I just felt like it was interesting. So I, yeah, yeah, I thought like, okay, maybe I should add this or I should showcase this. I did it at first, I was considering a side by side thing, but I felt like, ah, oh, it's too. I didn't like it. So, so I just went ahead and I went ahead and yeah, put them on top of each other, like with just lower. Uh, with just higher transparency for the other video and then yeah for the next part it's just the, the different angles again okay uh if you could if you might notice as well from here i'm i started trying to cut it a bit in sync with the music every time the beat changes to nakolong to nakolong Nakolong ka, and then change. Nakolong, nakolong, nakolong ka. Too. And then, like, it just kept getting faster and faster, as you can see, as we'll see here. Change. There, yeah, so, yeah, so that the cuts were like. It's gradual. It gradually became like faster and faster, uh, just to sort of be in sync with the emotions in the music, which was it was building up towards that point. And then there's a small section just before this segment where I kind of did the overlapping thing again, but this time they were just like two different dances, kind of from the same angle but different dances. I don't remember the like deeper meaning. I don't think I was thinking that much about like the deeper meaning behind it, yada yada yada. It was just, I don't know, it just felt right. But looking at it now, I think, you know, maybe it's like, a, I don't know, a good representation of the inner turmoil and chaos going on in my life. So, yeah. Okay, I remember when I was editing this, I was um, interested again of how these two takes kind of connected. Because when I did this step in the, in the part where I'm outside, like on the street, and then for the next step where in, in this scene, I start from here and then I go boom, boom, boom. Like... I hope that made sense, especially to non-dancers, <laughs> hopefully, but yeah, like from when I did this and then it connected to the next one, um, yeah, I just thought it was interesting. I was like, wow, I did not fully intend for that to happen, but it did. So yeah, uh, yeah, those are just some examples of me being, you know, working with just the films. I end up with and just me being pleasantly surprised that like oh my god they connect hey you know surprise surprise moments okay there let's go okay there yay there so if you notice I did a little bit of a color change together with that step when I kicked. Yeah, because at this point in the song, it kind of feels like uh, Ben and Ben is, you know, singing about like finally having hope again after all that chaos in the first part. So for me, uh, it just, 
was just like, oh, you know, it would be nice to, bam, to have that explosion of color. But of course, because all I have is iMovie, I'm not a professional color grader. For those who don't know, color grading is a specific skill set, a specific job in the film industry wherein your duty is to edit the colors in a film for it to fit the mood that you want the audience to feel. Because it's a huge factor. And I think one reason why I was so keen to do color, color grading for this one as well was because Goya the film had such amazing color grading. Like, oh my gosh. It was so beautiful. Like, you know, for the scenes that it's like an afternoon day back in Spanish era Philippines. Kinda Spanish era Philippines. No, it wasn't fully Spanish era, my bad. Sorry. But yeah, you know, it's there's really that difference when it's an afternoon outside versus those scenes where Goyo is um like out at night and it's late and you have to feel cold. Yeah, it just wah. Oh, amazing! Yeah, so that's why I did a little bit of a color change. Okay, uh, this part, okay, for this moves in the making, I won't be using the actual audio because of copyright reasons. Because, you know, we gotta, I can't afford music licenses just yet. <laughs> So if you listen to this, the origin, the, the actual film that I posted, you'll hear that in this part, the audio, or if you use headphones, you'll hear that there's a gradual change in the volume of the audio, which I only found out when I was re-watching this like a couple months ago. I was like, what? I did not check the audio and I was so annoyed at myself. <laughs> Because, yeah, that's another thing that, that um, you know, we usually don't think about in film or in, or in editing. But actually, in the art industry, there is something, in the creative industries, there's something called sound design. Wherein, you know, you have to actively be conscious of, like, just the sounds that the audience can hear and the levels and stuff. Of course, be, me just doing this as a... For, for, for fun, just for myself, and most importantly, just on iMovie, I don't have any of that. But I could have, at the very least, checked to make sure that I only had one music file. Um, yeah, just one music file, audio file, so that it doesn't... I think what happened here was I wasn't able to delete the audio for that scene. Because, um, yeah, usually the way I put it together, I think at the time would be I. So I record all of the videos and then I watch it back and then I try to think of, okay, what was I hitting here? I try to remember like what the time was. So, uh, I just. Usually I'm very. Usually I hit the lyrics or beats pretty like visibly, so it's easy for me to just put the music on top even though the original video doesn't have music. Um, so yeah, from no audio, I add the audio, and then when I put it all together in iMovie, yeah, usually I try to align the visuals or I try to align the music, and then that's how, like, that's when I cut things up and delete the things I don't need, what I don't want. I guess for this one, I wasn't able to delete the audio for this, for that part which was kind of careless of me um, because if this were a pro professional film, you know, that would really affect how it would be viewed. Like, for example, you know, it might not be important if you're just watching videos like this on your phone or if you're watching videos on, like, your laptop and it's just like, a, you know, but, for example, if you're watching a film on, in the cinema, in a post-pandemic life, or actually, you know, cinemas are starting to open now, but yeah, if you, if you watch a movie there and the audio isn't leveled, it's going to take the audience out of that experience. Uh, it's going to be like, oh, like I heard the audio kind of suddenly get louder. So that's when you feel, oh, right, because it's edited. 
But yeah, just a little tidbit and trivia kind of related to this. There you go. All right. Yes, there we have it. Let's go. So that was uh, my freestyle dance film for Suicide by Ben and Ben. Oh, wait, I didn't talk about this. Yeah, this one, this album art, I was so blown away by it. I was just like, wow, oh my gosh. So now I'm a huge fan of the artist, Nikolai. And then I found out that he's the he's Ben and Ben's go-to for like album art stuff. Uh, at least until the previous album. I'm not sure about their latest album. But yeah, like his work's just so cool. And, you know, it's amazing. For me, I really, I know I felt something because of the music. I felt something because of the film. And I felt something again when I looked at this uh, album art. So I was just like, wow, art is amazing. Okay. So yeah, that's it. Key takeaways or anything. Yeah, I'm just really proud of myself, I guess, that I made this back then. And I think this was one of the uh, most crucial, crucial examples of me really using art as a safe space to just let my feelings go. Uh, it was... Yeah, I, I want... Some days, I'm like, I want to go back and tell 2018 Asha, you're gonna be okay. At least much better than how you are at that time. Actually, you know, sometimes I, I'm not sure if I'm much better now. Because 2018 Asha was so full of energy, so full of life. I mean, I still am. I guess, yeah, I guess. Is this part of maturing? <laughs> Yeah, because I, I really was just like, I could go hard and just dance so long and just, you know, work so hard and just, yeah. But nowadays, I'm more conscious of just trying to, rather than allowing myself to be swept away by my passions and just fleeting emotions, I'm trying my best to learn hard how to stay rooted in something so that I'm not at the mercy of my whims. Wow! Oh my gosh! But yeah, I just really don't want to be at the mercy of my whims. So yeah, I'm just, that's something I'm trying to balance. Like sometimes I miss having that insane amount of energy, but at the same time, I'm like, now I'm, yeah, the, just that energy in that drive. But at the same time, I'm glad that now I'm just able to be consistent and you know unfortunately or fortunately you know coming into this life you know being a professional and all that has required me to challenge myself to just have a bit more distance from my art have learned to you know just pace myself a bit better so in terms of like how I feel, the passions are no longer as intense. And yeah, there were some times that I would question myself like, do I still even have passion for dance? Do I still have passion for art? This is still, still something I want to do. Um, just because, yeah, it's not as intense as before. But now, yeah, I guess I'm just learning that it's okay. It's part of growing up to and you just know how to pace oneself yeah going back to the freestyle dance film i just want to give a big shout out to 2018 asha she's working so hard she's hustling like crazy uh but what she has yet to learn is to take care of her health because she can't do anything she can't do shit if she's not healthy so yeah, that's why we are here today. We are learning to be healthy, to stay 
grounded, stay rooted, stay consistent. Let's go. Yeah. And with that, thank you so much for watching this episode of Moves in Making. I hope that uh, you learned a little something, something, whether you're a dancer, wanting to know how to like just break down your own work, or if you're a non-dancer and you're just curious about like how dancers make these things, or how I make these things. I don't know, is anyone out there curious about how I make these things? Yeah, we're gonna know. So with that, thank you so much once again, and make sure that you like, follow, or subscribe to my channel and my social media to stay updated when I will post new things like this. Bye! See ya!